identify opportunities that you could use to unlock your business potential. So what the sense of holding 100% of something that gives you nothing when you can hold just a percent of a business that gives you a lot of money. For young guys who want to invest, uh, I, I think the first issue is start early. This is Business Foresight. In our second installment of our diary segment, we'll look at Kenya, East Africa, Africa and the world at large. Beginning as off is the Kenyan market where the telecommunications regulator has demanded that Equity Bank undertakes to compensate mobile phone subscribers for any losses they may incur during the one-year trial of its SIM, putting to the test the company's thin SIM assertion that the technology is safe. Safaricom, which owns the M-Pesa mobile cash transfer and banking service, has opposed the use of technology, arguing that the embedding of a SIM card on the primary SIM of a mobile subscriber exposes them to risks of fraud and loss of private information. Safaricom has warned that it will review its legal commitment to M-Pesa customers who opt to use equity banks overlay SIM cards. In East Africa, the internationally backed government in Mogadishu is seeking to claw back authority over Somalia's territorial waters, including the area bordering Kenya, that is potentially reaching oil and gas deposits. Somalia has petitioned the UN body that determines international maritime borders to shelve Kenya's applications for a larger territory in a dispute linked to lucrative oil and gas reserves in the Indian Ocean. Somalia is pursuing a two-pronged approach that includes pursuing arbitration through the UN clause and judicial process after it filed a suit last month with the International Court of Justice in The Hague, the UN's top court. In Africa, the head of a treatment center in Liberia, the country worst hit by West Africa's deadly Ebola outbreak, has urged survivors of the disease to donate their blood for use in treating infected patients. The epidemic has already killed over 2,800 people, more than the combined total of all previous Ebola outbreaks, most of them in Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone, where it has overwhelmed already fragile health services. Studies suggest that transmission from Ebola survivors might prevent or treat infections in others. The WHO or the World Health Organization said this month that products and serum derived from the blood of survivors could be used to treat the disease until experimental drugs currently under development enter production. And on the global scene, the number of Americans filing new claims for unemployment benefits rose less than expected last week, suggesting an acceleration in job growth in September. Initial claims for state unemployment benefits increased 12,000 to a seasonally adjusted 293,000 for the week and at September 20th, the Labor Department said Thursday. Claims for the prior week were revised to show a 1,000 more applications received than previously reported. Economists polled by Reuters News Agency had focused claims raising to 300,000 last week. The four-week moving average of claims considered a better measure of labor market trends as it irons out week-to-week -week volatility fell 1,250 to 293,500 people. Welcome to this segment of the interview and this is WTV where we look at the interview segment of your favorite show, Business Foresight. Today we go beyond the ordinary to give you reasons as to why businesses or business empires rise or fall. Our focus though is the rise of business empires and no other than our guest today and it will interest you to know that Mr. Ndindi Nyoro, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Investax Capital, is just 28 years of age. 
and is minting millions in the CBD. He will tell us what is the secret behind his business. Thank you very much for your time. Karibu sana. And we appreciate you. Asante. Now, I would like you to begin us by briefly introducing yourself to us uh, mm -hmm. for the purposes of our viewers to understand who is Nindi Nyoro and okay. where did you begin? Nindi Nyoro is a businessman in Nairobi with an interest in IT and uh, mostly financial services. We have a company called Investax Capital where we deal in uh, shares and matters to do with the Nairobi Securities Exchange. We also have a company called Afrisec Telecoms Limited, mm -hmm. which is at uh, International Life House Third Floor. And uh, we offer internet services and also softwares and other IT services and, uh, and uh, supplies of commodities based in IT. Uh, I am also in terms of CSR, I serve as the chairman of CDF, Kiharu Constituency. That is how I give back to the society. Uh, because basically that is more of uh, giving my time to that endeavor. Mm -hmm. I schooled in KU. I am an economist. So I started BA Economics in Kenyatta University. Yeah. Now tell us about uh, your business acumen. When did you uh, come to the conclusion or think about uh, and decide rather that I think I want to do business? How did you begin? Business I started way back. I, in fact, I some, sometimes I remember the, my, the where where I, I started, and uh, I laugh about it mm -hmm. because I remember I think when I was in class four or class six in primary school, I already had a kiosk at home in Moranga County. That is, I had a small kiosk inside our house where people could come and 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 buy uh, salt and paraffin and such. Then I went to high school. I uh, just is still in Buranga County in a school called Kiabugi High School. Still there from the time I was a uh, first year or a uh, 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 form one, I was doing business still in terms of I was mending people's shoes mm -hmm. when I was in uh, uh, form one. Also, I graduated to selling lorry pops and biscuits and such manner of things. Then when I went to campus, my f first year actually, second semester, I also continue doing business and uh, I, I, st I, op I started a hotel or a shanty, so to say, in a place called KM, just around KU. Uh, it was a cafe selling cheap food to students. Mm -hmm. So my business journey started way back when I was a young person or when I was actually uh, in primary school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, when you, t uh, I'm more interested in the bit about uh, KM, yeah, uh, near Kenyatta University. Yeah. Uh, when you say you're selling cheap food, how yeah. much was uh, the school canteen or the mess offering uh, food at what price, and how much were you offering outside there? At around that time, uh, the difference between KM and mess was not that huge, but now the tragedy came. When I, when I launched my business in KM, we got a new VC just around that time. And uh, she streamlined Professor Mogenda. And she streamlined ish, a, a lot of things in KU. One of the things including messes within KU. So what happened, the, 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 most of the students preferred to eat inside rather than outside. And actually my hotel didn't last even a month. All my help, because I had invested my entire loan from a higher education loans board went down in three weeks and I remember I spent part of the semester or the major part of the semester taking actually true tea, uh, strong tea sorry, strong tea and uh, ugali for the remaining part of the semester because I had invested all I had in and that then business. It, you, you, you lost everything. Then it flopped. Now that is where the challenge is because most businesses today someone tries for the first time they fail, uh, for example, uh, like uh, it happened to yeah. you, and they give up completely. Yeah. Did you give up? Uh, entirely no, because when I actually started the business that it failed, I also tried to be in politics in university, I failed. At some point I decided to be just a quiet student, study, get out of school, get a job, and that's it. But again, once you are aiming, when, when you focus your mind into aiming high, it's very hard for you to give up that dream. So I never gave up, actually. So when I graduated from KU, uh, I remember the people who had attended my graduation. I told them to pray for me not to get a job. 
because I was not interested in giving up in terms of uh, doing business. And I never looked for a job, actually. I never sent a CV after my graduation. So I started small businesses, uh, which evolved and graduated to the entities that they are now. Mm -hmm. So giving up is, is, is an option of failures. Mm -hmm. yeah. now, Tell us about uh, your, I, I understand from your introduction, uh, two main businesses that you are running. Yeah. How did you begin, for example, yeah. the brokerage farm yeah. and also the technology farm? Yeah. And where are they now? In fact, I, I started, my, my, my genesis is actually based in financial industry because by training I am an economist. And when I was still in campus from second year, I was working for a stockbroking firm. So my, 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 my stronghold, so to say, is basically in the financials. But what happened is that I had an agency with one of the stockbrokers in town uh, right from the time I was in campus. I ran it, but uh, I had a branch in Dika. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you how I started the technology company. Mm -hmm. And this company in Dika, the branch, I was experiencing a lot of problems with the internet. I tried so many providers but still they were not as consistent as to support the system that we were using. So I thought maybe there is a business opportunity in that field. And that's how I started off my technology company. Around that time again, as uh, fate would have it, I saw on papers one of the telecoms in, 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 in Kenya called KDN, uh, currently rebranded to Liquid Telecoms. They were looking for dealers. So because I, around that same time I had interest in technology, I applied. It wasn't easy, but I got the dealership. So in terms of, it was actually by default to start an IT company based on the disappointments I got through the service providers I had in the financial company. So when I started the, the IT company, I sort of uh, engaged my mind more in the IT company and disengaged from the financial company. That was around, I think, 2011 or so, or 2010, end of 2010. So when I, I think it was actually 2011, so I ran the technology company, then one and a half years down the line, a classmate of mine uh, from KU had a big, a good opportunity of again doing financial business through CFC Stanbic mm -hmm. Financial Services, mm -hmm. a subsidiary of a CFC Stanbic uh, Bank, which is majority owned by Standard uh, Bank of South Africa. Mm -hmm. So we joined hearts. And uh, we round now the invest tax capital. So that's why. That is I, in 2011. 20, one and a half years after 2011. That was uh -huh. around 2012, mid. Mm -hmm, mid 2012. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's when we started the, the financial company. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's growing stronger up to date. What is your turnover in the technology firm and the, 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 the financial services firm, the stock brokerage firm currently? Africa Telecoms, we have around. Uh, in fact, I, I like measuring the success of my businesses based on the number of people that are employed in there. So in the AfriSec Telecoms, they are allowed uh, 13 or so employees. And our, though the, the, the expenses are quite also huge, the turnover per month could be around 2 million. So in the, te, in the, in the, IT ca, in the financial company, where we basically invest on behalf of of uh, our clients through SBG Securities. Mm -hmm. It was uh, formerly known as CFC Stanbic Financial Services. In daily, we do a turnover of around 20 million in terms of tradings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And looking at that journey so far and where you are today, yeah. what could you tell uh, a young person out there who is in school, who is doing some sort of innovation yeah. and they're not sure, yeah. uh, how can they come out and be known and stand on their own? You know, uh, I think we, it's, it's also uh, an failure of our backgrounds. Because when we go to primary schools, we are told to study hard so that we go to good high schools. Good high schools, we are told to study hard, get an A, go to a good university and take a good course. The same in the university, we are told to study hard so that you get a job. All through, the focus is usually on getting that good job, well-paying job. But the system has totally uh, uh, not address the issue of who actually creates these jobs because all of us are job chasers. Mm -hmm. But now, who creates these jobs? These are people like me and I, uh, like, like uh, you and me. And I, I actually challenge every young person out there that 
it's not a mass you become an employee. It is also people with the blood that you have, with the brain that you have, who start these big empires that we see. And therefore, my challenge is that we focus our minds from being mere employees and focus to being business creators, people who create entities, and in that process, actually become employers. Well, that is very uh, inspiring, and I hope our viewers uh, listen and take note of that very yeah. critically. Um, I, I would just like you to probably take this opportunity and uh, probably add on uh, possibly what didn't come out in my asking uh, yeah. during the course of the interview. Yeah. Maybe the, the one of the also challenges that I would give to everyone is that Kenya is usually a consumer market. We like consuming, consuming every time. When you get a job, the first thing you do is to get a loan. That loan is not to buy a capital investment. It is a, to buy consumables or to buy household goods. These are things that do, do not add value in terms of income streams. So my challenge is, when you have an income stream, think of creating the other one, not on how to deplete what is coming out from this income stream. And therefore the challenge is actually on investments. For the economy to grow, we have to have an investment culture. Mm -hmm. For us individually to grow, we have to actually have the investment culture so that the income we get can actually create another income stream elsewhere, but it has to start by saving. Mm -hmm. And on this saving, it's not merely putting the money in your bank account. There are so many investment options. One and most efficient one, and very liquid actually, being investing in the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Thereby, you actually accumulate your money after you accumulate your money, any opportunity that comes along, you can actually grab it and invest in an entity or in a venture or in an idea that can actually create a stream by itself of income. Mm -hmm. There are so many young people, innovators in our campuses today. Mm. They have brilliant innovations, yeah. but they do not have the financial muscle yeah. uh, to actualize those dreams. Yeah. What can you tell them? Zero percent of nothing is nothing. If you have a business, 100% of an entity that brings zero profit, you actually are earning zero profit. So there is no sense of owning 100% of a business if you can let a part of it go to maybe somebody who can bring in ex expertise or monies in terms of um, investing in the business. And then the 50% of the business can end up paying you actually millions. So what the sense of holding 100% of something that gives you nothing when you can hold just a percent of a business that gives you a lot of money? Well, thank you very much for the advice. Okay, and sandy, we hope, sandy. Uh, that was uh, Ndindi Nyoro, the Chief Executive Officer of Investax Capital, also the proprietor of Afrisec Telcoms, uh, talking to us about business investment and how to make your money work for you. My name is Zawadim Dibo. Join us again on the interview segment of your show, Business Foresight. Welcome to the expert corner of our interview segment and our guest today is Johnson Derry. Johnson Derry is the corporate affairs manager and also a financial analyst at ABC Capital. He tells us or lets us in to understanding how the securities markets operate. We begin by asking what is his understanding of the securities market and how it operates. The securities market is a, is a platform that allows for exchange of ownership of, of, of the you know, proportions of, of companies that we own as investors. So when you're an investor, to start from the beginning, as an investor you buy into a company, right? And the securities market then therefore offers you a platform for selling that. And that way that's a, that allows um, society to turn short-term money into long-term money uh, because then uh, if I want to invest for only a year uh, in a company 
I can I can invest in it, and then b before the year ends, I sell it to somebody else, and that that cycle keeps on going, and that's how the security is much. So we ask, what is the right age to begin trading in shares? As early as possible, <laughs> and the reason is, it's never. It's I don't think it's it's, it's, it's you can say it's too early to start making money, right? Because you start spending money from day one, and I think you should start making money from day one. What therefore should one consider before setting out to trade in shares, and how do you determine what counters are best suited at what time? The first thing to do is. Is, is determine what strategy will, will you are pursuing because different forms of strategy requires different so forms of information that you're looking for and that will help you trade. So once you establish what strategy you're, use, you're using and that will be determined also by the time you have available uh, for trading. So the more time you have, the, the more, the more uh, you know, uh, short time you can go. So the longer term uh, investors, I always suggest, you know, look for, buy value, buy fundamental value. Uh, the rest can buy, uh, can trade on momentum because that requires you constant, uh, you know, being on the market constantly, constant consumption of information and making decisions on a second by second basis. Just how much should one invest in shares? Uh, the answer is directly proportional to the answer to how much are you, can you save. So as you, you, you invest as much as you can save because investment is really a form of savings. People look at the NSC as a place to make quick returns. Which segment of the securities market should one consider for quick returns and long-term returns? Ideally, I should answer that. There is no particular sector that makes necessarily quick returns simply because uh, it, it, um, you, you measure the performance, uh, the, the, or the performance will be driven by, by, um, by the company that you invest in, how quickly it's growing. Having said that, however, there are certain sectors that actually have stood out, uh, having generated stronger returns on almost any other sector. Number one is banking, uh, and the, the way banking is and, and the financial sector in general is they have the, the they have an advantage in the sense that they share in in the gains of of all the sectors that are growing, but not necessarily in the they and they shun all the sectors that are losing. And winding us off, we ask, what advice does Johnson Derry have for young people who want to invest in securities? For young guys who want to invest. Uh, I, I think the first issue is start early, learn as much as possible, uh, because it, it is through that process. You, you might make some mistakes, we all have, even the best of our very best of us have made mistakes. But the important thing is to start early, and that way you, you, you learn more and you generate a lot more resources, instead of uh, waiting for, all, you know, um, when you're having a good salary, which might be very late in your in your career, right? I think I think you, the Nairobi Securities Exchange has made it very uh, easy for people to invest. So I, I don't think there's an there's any excuse. Just start early. In our business quote of the week, Albert Einstein says, "Strive not to be of success, but of value to your company." Our advice is WTV is to you is do not play office politics. Instead, do as much as you can to add value to your organization. Until next week, my name is Zawadin Dibo. We now leave you with the market watch. This is Business Watch. In our market watch, we look at what's trending. This week, capital gains tax, the merits in the real estate sector. Capital gains are the profits that an investor realizes when he or she sells the capital asset of a price that is higher than the purchase price. The tax can either be a gain or a loss. The government is gearing to tap into the thriving real estate industry by introducing a 5% capital gain tax. The law 
which will be effective from January 1st, 2015, is speculated to cause a stir in the real estate sector. The advantages that come along with this new tax regime. Firstly, there will be deferred tax. If the value of your property increases by 1 million during the year and it is not sold, homeowners will not have to pay the capital gain taxes. Meanwhile, homeowners will not have to pay taxes for a property that is still theirs. Secondly, inventory is not taxed. After buying land or property for your business premises and selling it after one year, there will be no tax. This is because inventory is not considered a capital asset. Thirdly, equity in taxes. There is equity when paying taxes as the lower income who depend on salary are taxed, so will the ones who have made capital gains taxed. The resultant impact of the same is that it may lead to many property transactions before the beginning of next year to avoid the penalty. However, those whose land is compulsorily acquired by the state will be exempt from the tax.